Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Golden Blooded is a college football YouTube channel for entertainment. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get into our next college football video. Don't forget to send gear to represent your team. The address is P.O. Box 360, Liberty South Carolina 29657. Shout out to the Get It Gang. The Get It Gang is a name that I gave to the group of people in my comment section that leave video ideas. Because of you, the offseason hasn't been that bad. I haven't had to try to rack my brains to come up with content. You guys come up with content for me. And there will be Get It Gang merchandise in the merchandise store when it is finally launched. Today's Get It Gang member is Edward Warner. This is a very interesting idea, and I think it could happen. Here's a video idea. Right to the point. Here's a video idea. Fast forward to the 2030s. Streaming goes more mainstream. Live sports start to lose appeal, and streamers do not want to pay fat conference fees. SEC and B10... Big Ten, powerhouse teams, panic and start thinking we need to create a Euro Super League of the best college teams. The twist is what schools decide to not renew with the SEC or the Big Ten and then start contacting other schools to form a whole new P1 conference. First team that comes to mind to lead this renegade conference is Ohio State who call Alabama and then it's on. I love it. The Renegade Conference, and I think this is a real possibility. I do think that streaming college football games will go more mainstream, and more TV deals will be done through live streaming, like through your Netflixes, your Amazons, and so on and so forth. I think Disney will most certainly get involved because they already own ESPN. They will see the market, and they will live stream some games on some streaming channels that they own. So I think this is actually going to happen as far as streaming becoming mainstream. Now, the rest of this, I'm not sure if it'll happen, but it is very, very possible. And this is all about football. Conferences can still exist when it comes to basketball and the Olympic sports and everything else in academics, you name it. But as far as football goes, this could most certainly happen. In fact, we all think that the Big Ten and the SEC will split off from the NCAA eventually and create their own playoffs and national championship anyways. Well, this takes us a step further. The football conferences being done away with these teams splitting off from the Big Ten and the SEC and the Big 12 and the ACC and the Pac-12, wherever they're coming from in football to create this renegade league. And instead of Ohio State leading the way, I actually think Notre Dame could be the team leading the way. Why? Because Notre Dame has the biggest brand in the nation. Notre Dame has been independent all but one year. The only year that they were not independent was the 2020 COVID year in which they did go to the ACC championship and to the playoffs. So Notre Dame already knows what it's like to not be in a conference and knows how to get it done. So I think Notre Dame can lead the way. And I'm going to say this conference will consist of 48 teams. You have to have enough teams to draw in enough national interest to make this work. A 20-team league, not going to work. 40-team league, maybe could work, but just to be safe, we're going to say 48 teams. So with 48 teams, you can have 8 pods of 6 teams. Of course, certain rivalries can still be protected even if those two teams aren't in the same pod. So the teams that were on the line that didn't quite make the cut, but have an argument, you could switch out some of these teams. This is just my list. So the teams that didn't quite make it and are on the line, Cincinnati, SMU, Houston, Syracuse, Pitt, Georgia Tech, Maryland, Illinois, Minnesota, Boise State, Oregon State, Washington State, Arizona State, and Stanford. And remember, I'm not making my choices based on overall success because some teams have had a lot of national championships in the past, but now their brand is not so great. I'm talking about strength of brand right now, how valuable these teams are as of right now, not just historically. So my 48 teams are, first up, Notre Dame, the team that starts it all. And in no particular order, after Notre Dame, Ohio State, Alabama, Michigan, Texas, USC, Oklahoma, Clemson, Florida State, Nebraska, Tennessee, Florida, Penn State, Washington, Oregon, Kentucky, Texas A&M, Virginia, Auburn, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan State, North Carolina, LSU, Utah, Iowa, Oklahoma State, Virginia Tech, Miami Hurricanes, UCLA, Ole Miss, Colorado, BYU, Baylor, NC State, Louisville, Arkansas, South Carolina, Missouri, Kansas State, West Virginia, TCU, Mississippi State, Purdue, Texas Tech, Red Raiders, UCF, 
Iowa State, and Arizona. So there are your 48 teams. And some of those teams are on the line as well, but they fell on the right side of the line. So some of those teams you could argue out of this conference, and the teams on the line argue in the conference. So I'll let y'all argue about that. I'm sure a lot of people disagree with some of the teams that I have in and some of the teams that I don't have in. Without further ado, the eight pods consisting of six teams, and I came up with some names, and I think these are some good names for these pods. The first pod is the West Coast pod. The six teams in the West Coast pod are USC, UCLA, Washington, Oregon, Utah, BYU. This is for travel concerns because you don't want the West Coast teams having to travel east for every game or for most of their games. So they can play each other for five of the games, and you can split the other games among the rest of the pods. So I really like the West Coast pods. A lot of teams familiar with each other. I think it would be a good pod. The next pod is the Southwest pod. This pod consists of Arizona, Colorado, Texas Tech, Texas, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Once again, I think this pod makes a lot of sense. I like the name that goes with it. The only team that's a little iffy in this pod is Colorado, but I decided to keep Utah and BYU together. So Colorado went into the Southwest pod. The next pod is the Heartland pod. You have Baylor, TCU, Texas A&M, Arkansas, LSU, and Missouri. And keep in mind, some of these rivalries are split as far as one team in one pod and one team in another pod. But you can still protect those rivalries so those rivalries get played every year without the two teams in the rivalries being in the same pod. The next pod is the Midwest pod. You have Nebraska, Wisconsin, Iowa, Iowa State, Kansas State, and Purdue. I really like that pod. It looks like it could be one of the easier pods, but I still think it would be competitive, and they would have to play teams from other pods as well. The next pod is the Ohio Valley pod. This consists of Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Kentucky, Louisville, and Ohio State. That could be the toughest pod so far. The next pod is the Dixie pod. You have Clemson, Tennessee, Alabama, Auburn, Ole Miss, and Mississippi State. Okay, the Dixie pod is most definitely the toughest pod of any of the pods that we've come across so far. Next up is the Appalachian pod. You have North Carolina, NC State, Virginia Tech, Virginia, West Virginia, and Penn State. I think that would be a very competitive pod. Maybe not the toughest pod, but I don't think it's one of the easier pods either. And finally, the last pod is the Deep South pod. You have UCF, the only true group of five team that I put in the Renegade Conference. I know BYU was considered a group of five, although I thought they were powerful before they joined the Big 12. Then you have the Miami Hurricanes, then Florida, Florida State, Georgia, and South Carolina. So there's my point. South Carolina's in the Deep South. Clemson's in Dixie. You can protect that rivalry so they can play each other even though they're not in the same conference, which they're not in the same conference right now, so it's really not that big of a change for them. But any other rivalry that you can think of that are important rivalries, you can protect them even if those two teams aren't in the same pod. I like how this turned out. I like the teams in each pod. I think they fit what the group is supposed to represent as far as their region goes, and I like the names of each pod. The West Coast pod, the Southwest pod, the Heartland pod, the Midwest pod, the Ohio Valley pod, the Dixie pod, the Appalachian pod, and the Deep South pod. So y'all know in the comment section, number one, do you think that live streaming does go more mainstream sooner rather than later? And do you think there is a chance that teams decide, as far as football goes, not everything else, to split off from their conference, not sign a grant of rights with their conference, but instead come up with a TV deal of their own without being in a conference? So the conference gets zero cut out of this. They can negotiate who gets what as far as the split because some teams will deserve to get more than others, but they could still make a truck load of money. Even the lower teams on this list could still make a truck load of money. When it comes to football and the amount of money that college football makes, I think these teams jumping out of a conference and just making the most money that they can make along with other teams creating their own conference would make a lot more sense. You're not having to give any money towards the conference that you're in. And you really don't have to sign a grant of rights either. Because if a renegade conference does get started, nobody's going to want to leave. But if this does happen, you have to make sure to have enough representation to where the entire nation would be interested. Otherwise, you will lose money. And finally, do you agree with the teams that I put in this renegade conference and the eight pods that I came up with? And did you like the name of the pods that I came up with as well? That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.